All right, so let's get down to business. Appreciate everybody that been doing their homework, everybody that been studying, everybody that been doing, doing additional research and putting in that work. Shout out to y'all. Shout out to the people that been hitting me up to check to see if they're doing things correctly, right? And the people that came onto the live trading session this morning. So today, um, we're gonna do trend lines, right? However, um, I think I'm gonna put trend line on pause for a second and do um, support and resistance, right? Which is very simple. We could probably do both of them. Um, if you hear me clearly, somebody dropped something in the chat, so I know that you can hear me clearly. And if you can see my screen, you could do that also, right? So, <clears throat> let's get down to business, right? Um, support and resistance. Let me find a chat I could clean up. All right, support and resistance, right? Now, if you remember what I was saying before, um, in Forex trading, we have, you hear me say this many times, but we have, we call con, Lenses, right? Cool. Let me keep this chat right here. Right, so in Forex Trading, we have what we call confluences. Confluences is basically reasons why we enter a trade. We don't just enter a trade because we feel like the market going to go up and we feel like the market going to go down. You know? We enter a trade because... Um, because we have reasons to, right? Because we find reasons that allows the probability to be in our favor. Because really and truly is a game of probabilities, right? So the maths of trading is um, if the probability is in your favor over a time, period of time, most of your trades should be correct. And if you're risk to reward, which we will get into after, is right then there's no way to lose so how we win in the market we treat the market as if it's a casino and we're the host right so we only want to take trades where the probability is in our favor and how do we know and how do we measure that probability confluences because confluences is reasons why we enter the trade right so so far We've learned um, market structure. Okay. Market structure, that's one component, right? Being able to tell um, what phase, what trend, what direction the market is going, that's one component, right? Then we have multiple time frame analysis. That's another confluence. You want to know what every time frame is doing, right? If this time frame is in an uptrend and this time frame is in a downtrend, if this time frame is an impulse or if this time frame is a pull back, right? How do you know that? You know that by practicing. So quick review. We know that this is an imp we know that this is an impulse, right? And we know that this is a pullback, and we know that this is an impulse, right? So on a daily time frame, we have an impulse up, pull back, an impulse up. However, just because this is a pull um, back on the daily time frame does not mean it's gonna be the same thing on a lower time frame, right? So if you go down to a four hour and we look at the highlighted area, we would see, okay, this is the four hour market structure. For that daily pullback, we had a downtrend on the four hour, right? 
So knowing, knowing that this move, right? Let me just highlight this one too. Knowing that this move back, right, on the daily time frame. There we go. Okay. So knowing that this move back on the daily time frame is a pullback, right? We know that this downtrend on the four hour is going to be obviously um, short lived, right? So don't get lost. Right now, you just understand the market. When you understand the market, you'll be able to place trades and you would know why the market is going in the direction it's going, right? So this is why I break down these charts for you so you can understand the reason why we place trades. You don't just want to place trades. You want to know why this trade should work, right? So we know this is a daily impulse. We know this is a daily pullback, right? Impulse pullback. Right, we have a um a low. Just recap, a high. Right, and we have a low high. Right on the daily time frame. So knowing that this move is a pullback, we don't get caught up in the downtrend on the four hour. We know that this downtrend on the four hour is going to be short lived. Right. And we know it's just a pullback. And we know that the real move is up because the daily time frame, the higher time frame is going up, right? So that was just a quick recap on market structure, right? Um yeah, so um that's not the lesson for today, but you know, it's always good to, to do a little recap, right? And like I was saying, you know, like um, you can zoom in, right? Price is fractal. So you can zoom in from a yearly, monthly, weekly, minute, second perspective. You can always break down candles. One daily candle is made up of eight, probably eight, four hour candles, right? One, um, one hour can I mean one daily candle is made up of twenty four one hour candles, right? So you you just understand how much you could zoom into the market, right? Um, this is the one hour time frame. So you see that on the one hour time frame, it looks a little more um crazy, and as you zoom out, it looks a little more um seen right on the lower time frame all right but the reason why we analyze the higher time frame is because we want to catch the big moves we want to catch those long top trades right but anyways back to the topic at hand support and resistance right and then we can get into trend lines so support and one of the most basic strategies, one of the most basic confluences used in the market, right? Basically, basically, a lot of beginners use this to trade. Um, well, does it work? Yes, it does work, but you can't use it by itself. By itself, it does nothing, right? So with other confluences, yes, it could work. So here's the idea, right? Basically, I don't know if you have done any research in Forex before, but support and resistance can be thought of as a ceiling and flooring, right? Basically, this is the ceiling and this is the floor, right? So what we expect, we expect the market to bounce Obviously, if you jump up, you would hit the ceiling, right? And when you hit the ceiling, obviously, you, you bounce back down. If you imagine you use a ball, right? 
and that ball would bounce on the floor, right? If it hits the floor, obviously it's gonna bounce back up. If it hits the ceiling, it bounce back down, right? That is the idea. When you identify a support and resistance zone, you expect that market to bounce off of that zone, right? Now, when you approach a support and resistance zone, one of two things can happen, right? The market could either bounce from that zone or it could break that zone, right? So a break would look like this. You would have the market break the zone, right? So now that this zone is broken, something changes. So let's say this is, um, floor is always support, right? Because it's supporting um, the weight, it's supporting the ball, it's supporting the market, right? Resistance. Resistance is the ceiling, right? So here's the idea. Once the market breaks through support, support becomes resistance, right? Because the market is no longer above support, the market is below. So that flooring is not a ceiling. Think of it as a three-story building and you're on the middle, you're on the third floor, right? Let's say you bounce that ball and that ball breaks through the flooring and goes down, right? Hits the second floor and comes back up. It's obviously gonna come right back up to the ceiling and bounce on that ceiling, you know? Anyways, yeah, so support slash resistance, right? Right? So here's the idea. If the market breaks support, then we expect, what we expect when it returns is a retest, right? You learn that word retest and continue, continue to drop, right? Down to the next support or resistance level, right? Um, when will we expect the market to break support or resistance. Before we get into that, let me do a broken resistance example, right? Let's say the market came up, broke resistance, we expect a retest, continue, right? Because resistance now becomes slash support, right? So you break through the roof, and now you're standing on top of the roof, or you, 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 you broke through the ceiling, and now you're on that um, third floor, if you're on the middle floor, right? So here's the idea. If the market is in consolidation, if you know what consolidation is, it is a zigzag motion, no high highs, no lower lows. Consolidation, also known as accumulation, that means the market just accumulated money before it makes its next move, right? For example, this is a consolidation right here. Now, yes, it looks like eight candles, but if you go down to the four hour time frame, the one hour time frame is gonna be actually let's go let's go and see what it looks like right so here we had a market making um it going sideways right going one hour yes it look it, it does look like a little trend but it's going sideways Right, it's stuck within this range right here, right, and that is what we call consolidation, right? On the daily time frame, we ask anyways, right? On the daily time frame, we see the market going sideways. Anyways, back to support and resistance. In the, in the, when the market is in that consolidation phase, we expect it to go sideways. We expect it to bounce off support and resistance. So if you were to place trades, here's how the trade would go. You would wait for the market to come up to resistance to go short, right? Stop loss above resistance because you're not expecting it to break through that ceiling, right? Target down to support, right? 
and that's how you would execute a trade like that. Um, let's say um, the marketing consolidation, and you want to enter off um, support and resistance, then you would wait for the market to reach down to resistance if you expected it to bounce. The, conf the rest of confluence says, okay, we're gonna buy here. Then stop loss will be below the resistance. Your target would be, I mean, stop loss would be below support. Your target would be the next resistance level, right? So usually we expect smooth sale in between, but when the market gets to those support and resistance level, we expect to see a fight, right? Because we know that it's a fight between the bulls and the bears, the buyers and the sellers. We know where the buyers are. The buyers are at support. We know where the sellers are. The sellers are at resistance. So we know once the market gets there, we have to see, okay, who's going to win, right? And then we make our decision. Or you can make a decision in advance and um, do that, right? But yeah. So that's how you um you place your trades based off support and resistance when the market is in that consolidation phase right so let's say when do we anticipate the market to break support and resistance right well you literally just read my mind good 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 that means you're paying attention well obviously if the market is in an uptrend, we know it's going to go up, right? So let's say this uptrend began, then obviously in an uptrend, we, we expect resistance to be broken and support to be formed, right? In a downtrend, we expect support to be broken and resistance to be formed, right? Um, how do we draw how do we find, first of all, how do we find the support and resistance level? Basically, the levels are formed when we have a sharp move away. When we have a move that is like a peak, right? Basically, a point. So, when we have something like this, boom, a sharp move away, then that level right there would be um, resistance, right? So once we get that sharp, sharp, sharp move away, then we could highlight that area and we could say, okay, there's a lot of um, sellers right there because the only thing that can cause the market to drop quickly like that is money, a lot of money in the market, right? So when we get those, those um, valleys and peaks, then that's going to be support and resistance right not the drag draggy ones the sharp ones the, the, the sharp impulses away right the same for um the same for support right when we get that 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 peak that 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 kind of triangle point right in the market right a sharp move right one sec girls nah i'm, I'm like yeah. So, um, yeah, so let me um, just look, have a look and see um, if we can identify some support and resistance levels, right? So, we're on a daily chat. Okay. Um, right here, right? This is a support and resistance level, right? Now I draw this level from, yeah, I drew this level from the body of the candle to the wick, right? Um, that's just my preference. As a trader, once you practice this, you would draw it. Some people draw it at the tip of the candle, some people draw it from the whole candle, but I draw it right here, right? Um, when you're looking at support and resistance levels, you have to think of it as a zone. The market is not perfect. So even if you get this support and resistance level point right here, the market is not perfect. It's not going to come down to a specific price. It's going to come down to a zone, a range, an area, right? 
So then you just mark off that area. If you are a trader, let's just draw it out, right? It's good to draw it out so you can see it visually, right? You had to move down, straight down. You had to move straight up, right? Now, if we were to move this across, what do we see? You see that sharp movement? You could almost, if you put your finger on it, you could almost get like cut, you could almost get stabbed, right? That tells you, okay, that's a significant put and resistance level. So what can you expect from that? So you can expect, okay, there's a lot of money there, so we could get a reaction. And that's just what happened, right? If you look when the market actually came down to that level, we had that reaction. So a trade would go like this. You would go long a little before the entry because a lot of the times the market might come close and not actually enter, right? And your target would be the next support and resistance level. So this would be the next level up here, right? So that would be a target. So let's say you place a trade solely based off support and resistance. In this example, the market will come down, tap your level, tap your entry, and then go up, right? On this trade, the market only went up to 464 pips. You enter a trade for a dollar a pip, that's money, right? But only over one, two, three, four, five, six. It took six days for this move to happen. So you just enter the trade, you go to sleep, you do whatever you want. And yeah, that's that, right? So we're just gonna go through the charts and draw the levels, right? Um, let's see. In an uptrend, we would have resistance on the support level, so. I'm just gonna draw all the levels, right? So here we had a level, right? Because obviously, boom. So just to help you um, be able to identify the levels easier, right? So wherever there's a peak, you would draw a zone and highlight it, right? Now, it might look a little messy, but that's fine, right? Okay, so we have our zones highlighted, right? Oh, tonight's topic was support and resistance. Right, we already did like a nice little explanation. I'm just looking to see if we can identify it on the charts, right? So if you missed the first session of the class, you could look at the recording, right? So back to the um, chat. Um, I'm just I'm just going through this so you could actually see that a market reacts off of these levels, right? Um, let me hop on to the right hand thing to see how it looks. Okay, so here's the idea, right? We had our support and resistance level form right here, right? We had that reaction right here, right? We had our level form right here, right? And then we have another level form right here, right? Now, the market came up and we had, yes, we had a reaction, but we know that um, if multiple touches would be best to use, um, I don't think so. I think the less is touched, the 
better it's going to be, right? Because anytime the market touches a zone, the market removes money from that zone. So the more you touch the zone, the more money is removed, right? So, and also the reaction you get from that zone tells you how much money is there. So if um, the market only touched the zone once, that means, okay, there's a lot of money there because as soon as the market touched the zone, the imbalance was so strong that it pushed the market up and far away, right? And also the longer the market stays away from the zone, the stronger the zone, right? So you see how we have this strong imbalance, this strong push here? The market stayed away for a long time, and the one time it came back to touch, you see how it reacted, right? It jumped up 500 pips. So, I'd say the, the more the zone gets touched, the weaker the zone gets, right? So, here we had a reaction, right? But, obviously, we anticipated um, this is going to be broken because if it's an uptrend, we expect resistance to be broken, so we only take buys on support, right? So here we have this one. Um, we had this zone broken right here, right? As soon as you have that candle that goes through the zone, closes above, it's broken. If you have another candle form on the next side of the zone, it is considered broken, right? So that zone was broken, but that doesn't mean we won't get more reactions off of it, right? So this zone that was formed down here, the market came down, um, tapped. You would have time for the market to tap, push beyond the zone and go back. But the zone was not broken because why? We did not have a candle close on the other side. Yes, we had a week on the other side. We did not have a candle close on the other side, right? I'll be taking notes. And we had that rejection, right? And we're going to speak about rejection candles, right? Basically, once you have a candle come down and the wick come back up and the body is small and you have that wick, that's that rejection, right? So, um, actually, the homework going to be to learn the different candlesticks. So, we had a reaction right there, right? The market came up to the previous um, support and resistance zone, fought a little bit, came up and tapped this um, zone that was formed right here. I'm just going to put a circle on the zones that are formed out of nowhere and a um, arrow for the reaction, right? So we had this reaction, right? And don't just watch this like if it's this is a small reaction. This, if you had taken this trade, that is 100 pips, right? So you might watch these small moves, you might watch these small zones, like, oh, they're just small zones, they're not that significant. But when you place a trade on them, you get 100 pips, right? 100 pips is a lot in this market, right? So the market reacted off the zone for 100 pips. And as a matter of fact, for perspective purposes, we're going to mark how many pips the zone reacted, right? So for this first arrow, let me see how many pips it dropped. This first arrow right here, right? 77 pips, right? This, um, this second arrow right here, this looks like, well, if you had go long, you see how far it is. You never know how far the market might go, right? So you see, just entering off this simple zone right here, this simple support and resistance zone right here. I didn't even realize how many pips this zone moved, right? If you had taken the trade off of this zone, it would have been 500 pips in 15 days, 500 pips in two weeks, which is very good. So, I'll just write 500 right here, All right? Um, we had a little pullback on this zone, but you know, as I said before, if it's an uptrend, we expect resistance to be broken, right? And support to be found, right? So right here we had, um, 
just do this to one objectives, right? And then here we had, remember what I told you, right? We have resistance. Once the market breaks through, that resistance becomes what? Support, right? So what do we do? Once support is broken, we buy. We, I mean, resistance is broken, we buy. When the market comes down to retest, right? But the markets tend, tend to do something called the last kiss. Basically, when a zone is broken, the market likes to come down, kiss that zone goodbye, right? I'll miss you, goodbye, right? So here, right, we had a reaction, right? It didn't come close, it didn't touch the zone, but it came close enough for us, to, for, for us that we would have placed the trade. And then we have another reaction right here, right? So for this one, we had, 236 pips, right? Thirty-six, right? For this one, and then for this one right here, right? Um, we had 134, right? 160, 164. Now, the reason why I'm highlighting this, the reason why I'm showing you the pips, I just want you to see that it works. You get the reaction. I want you to see that it is, it is valuable information, you know? And if you learn how to draw these levels correctly, everybody have a different way of doing it. I'm showing you the way that works for me, right? The way that I've practiced, the way that I've used it, and the way that I've seen it work, this is not how I started off drawing it, right? There was a lot of trials and error, right? But this is the way that I find works best. So remember what I said to you. One, um, the more the zone is touched, the weaker it is. Two, the zone is formed from strong moves, strong valleys, and strong peaks, strong points, right? And um, you can see that the market is reacting, right? It's reacting because if you look at the levels, you have a reaction here. Look at that. You have a reaction right there. Right here, you have a reaction. So we have a reaction, a couple of reactions right there. Right. So um, you know, you know that support and resistance works, but you don't use it by itself. Right. You practice it. You practice it. You practice it, and you use it with the other confluences. Right. Because all support and resistance to you is telling you, okay, what are the odds, right? If you find a trade and a trade lineup with support and resistance, then obviously you won't place that trade, right? So um, another um, thing, right? First of all, you have any questions on support and resistance before I get into the next the next part of it, because um, well, yeah. can you just go over exactly where you would place the trade in support and resistance? Okay, so and um, one more thing, support and resistance different to supply and demand, right? It's completely different. All right. Completely different, right? So. Support and resistance. Basically, you want to sell at resistance and buy at support, right? So once the market, okay, let's see. All right, so let's say the market makes its support and its resistance, right? You had a two shot moves. So your job, 
you wait for the market to come back down to either one of support or resistance aligned with your other confluences. And once it gets there, right, you know at support, you buy because that's the floor. You're expecting the ball to bounce when it hits the floor, right? So obviously you buy and you're not expecting that ball to break through the floor. So you put your stop loss, what you want to risk on the, right? under that floor right and you um take profit at the ceiling because you're expecting the ball to stop at the ceiling obviously unless that ball is strong and to bust through the roof so once the market gets down to support you buy right because you're expecting it to continue up right and vice versa for resistance once the market gets down gets up to resistance right you're expecting it to um unless it's an uptrend if it's just consolidation or you could expect some form of reaction because you know the money is there right you sell at resistance right you stop loss above the ceiling you take profit at that target right that is the, the first two ways now if the market does break support and resistance right let's say this scenario right here once the market breaks support, support becomes resistance. Once the market is under support, it becomes resistance, right? So we know the rules. Once the market gets to resistance or the market comes back, we give that last kiss. You want to sell because you know it's at the ceiling. The ball cannot bust through the ceiling. The stop loss would be above, right? And your target would be down to the next level. Now here's the thing about the market, right? Um, what usually happens, the lower high is usually at that broken resistance, that broken support. So we know in a downtrend, right? The market is making lower lows, if you did your homework, and lower highs, right? Now, what does this remind you of? right the market made this low this um this lower low and shot up creating support right we know that this is a downtrend right so we know this um support was broken right here so knowing that yes this is a downtrend and knowing that, yes, support was broken, right? You now asking yourself, okay, where is the best place to sell and get in on that downtrend, right? Obviously, just knowing support and resistance alone, you mark off your support and resistance level, right? You mark off, yes, support, yes, resistance. The two best places or the two places the market is most likely to turn is at support and resistance just using that confluence alone so when the market comes up to support to resistance to support not to resistance look for sales or if it breaks through then we also look for sales up here right because that is the next support and resistance level right you know the the the, the you know in a downtrend a downtrend is only made up of lower lows and lower highs right so this being a lower high we know that the market cannot pass this level because obviously that's the lower high right so from that level down you look for shots and where based on what you learned so far where are best the highest probability shots to be found you're not just going to place a shot anywhere right you're not just going to place a shot or oh, the market going down you place a shot no we want the best price so for example let's say the market was here right yes you could place a shot here with your stop loss above support and resistance but why would you do that because you're going to be risking and your target at the next support and resistance right 
The reason why you won't, you won't just place a trade out immediately is because you want to limit that amount you're willing to risk. You want to get it at the best price possible, right? So if the market is up there in the middle of nowhere, not near any support and resistance, you won't just place the trade. You will wait for the market to get up to support and resistance, right? If it gets up to the to support and resistance, now you can place a trade. You can put your stop, you can make your stop loss much smaller, right? Because the space from which you're selling to the, 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 the price that you're selling at and the price that the market has to hit for you to be wrong is much closer, right? So you're risking much less on the trade, right? Because you're selling right at the highs, the lower high, right? So the market just has to make a smaller move for you to be wrong, right? You don't want to sell all the way down here and then the market has to move all the way up to tell you you're wrong, right? If you're wrong, you want to know that you're wrong quickly and you want to know that you didn't, you didn't have to risk so much pips, right? Because you also want to risk a small amount for a larger reward. So have a look at this, right? You're still at resistance. Your target is the next support because that's where you're expecting um, the market to go, right? The next support is here, yes, but keep in mind it is a downtrend. So you're expecting this support to be broken, right? You're expecting something like this, right? Broken retest and then something like this, right? Now, doesn't this risk the reward look much better than if you have been, if you had taken a trade somewhere like this, right? Basically, you're risking a lot more to gain a lot less, right? And this setup where it marked the risk the reward 1.9. That means for every one year risk, you gain one point reward right which is not a good reward so if you risk um ten dollars you would only win fifteen dollars on this trade however with this risk to reward which is 4.9 right four times what you risk if you risk one dollar then you win four dollars right when it hits your target right and in this market is all about risk to reward it's all about probabilities it's all about the odds in your favor, right? What makes you win is probabilities, the odds in your favor, you risk the reward, right? If for every trade you're winning three times more than what you risk, then you only need to win three out of 10 trades to make money, right? If you're only winning two times what you risk, then you only need to win five out of 10 trades to make money right and i'm gonna break down that maths for you later on but you know trading it doesn't involve a lot of maths it's just about um knowing your um knowing the market which is not too hard right you add up your confluences so far we have market structure we have multiple time frame analysis and we have support and resistance right so how does support and resistance tie in to multiple time frame analysis? Keep in mind, support and resistance, every time frame has their own support and resistance, yeah? Just like how every time frame has its own candle, every time frame has its own trend, every time frame has its own support and resistance, right? So let's hop on, let's let's um let's hop on the Y'all can watch this video if you want. Make sure you watch it again. I'll try to do so. As a trader, you know that the higher time frame support and resistance is the higher time frame confluences always outweighs the lower time frame confluences. Right? So basically, let's say you're a trader and you hop on the monthly chart. You want to know where is the monthly support and resistance level, right? 
So let's see what the supercharged resistance level would be down here, right? And we could already see that we had a reaction, right? The next level would be here, right? We had that um that move. And let's zoom in. That next level would be around here, right? So, as a trade off, you're looking at the monthly time frame. Now, you see the market came up and closed below the resistance level. Once you have that loop shooting out and the market come back and close, then that is a rejection, right? You didn't have another candle close on the other side, so the level is not open, right? So knowing this, then, you know, you understand, okay, the market just, um, the market just rejected that support and resistance level. So you can start looking for shots, right? So you have the monthly level marked up, right? So let's go down to the weekly, right? Basically, I mean, you don't have to draw it as a zone. That's just what I do. But you can use your own um, your own style, right? So on the weekly time frame, we're just gonna look for the levels and mark it off, right? Um, and we wanna look at the recent price action. We don't wanna go too far in the past, right? We wanna stay at least a year. A year and a half of recent data, right? If you go back too far, it probably don't have any money left there. So, on the weekly time frame, there isn't much to see. We have a level here, right? And then obviously, we have our level at the bottom, right? Change the color. So this is the weekly time for support and resistance, right? We're going to daily now. I want to see what the daily has for us. So we had this sharp pullback on the monitor here. Want to shape like a um a peak. We could call that support and resistance. So not a place, right? And here we could already see that we had two reactions, right? 200 pips, 100 pips, 100, 100 pips, right? This is a deal. So we just stretch just across. Because obviously the floor becomes the arm. Um, the ceiling becomes the floor. Right? So here we have. Let me draw this out like this. Um, then we add another one right here. Now these are just the daily, right? Now this would be a this would be a four hour on the four hour time frame, this would be a nice peak right here, right? So Let's just watch and count the reactions we get. So we had a 200 pips on this one. So then we had a 200, we had 163 pips on this one, right? Market book through here, right? Um, this would be considered a zone, well, a level because we had a uh, 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 a 
peak of the moment, right? But we're not gonna we're not gonna consider that right now. But we had a reaction, so we're gonna leave that, right? So we had a reaction here, right? Because here's what is on farm. And then over here we had several, several um reactions, right? We had three, one, two, three, then we had a break, right? And then we had the market came down, shot through. Now remember what I was saying, right? The level isn't considered broken until an entire candle closes on the other side. So in order for an entire candle to close on the other side, um, the whole candle has to be on the other side. So you see how this candle came down and closed on the other side? Yes, it did, but we didn't have an entire candle on the other side, right? Also over here, we had a candle, but half the candle was on the other side. We need a whole full body candle on the other side for the level to be confirmed broken, right? So, so then we had a sharp pullback, and now we have another circumstance since that we don't care. If the market does come back, then we can anticipate reactions sorry, on those levels, right? So, I mean, as a trader, I don't keep the levels on the charts, but I have I have a visual idea of where the levels at, right? And I only pay attention to the most important levels. So I will I will go down to the one hour. You know, those time frames are too nice. You want to draw significant levels, right? Levels that matter. So, um, here we had a nice reaction after four, right? Um, as you can see. This isn't just random data. This isn't just some random line I draw the charts, right? When you see something that works, your job now is to master it. Identify it. You're not gonna get on the first one. My level is just to look at that shit, right? Um, but it's always good to have an idea where your level's at. You don't need to draw them if you can see them when you look at the charts. Um, and yeah, um, if you have any other questions, I thought I would have got trim lines in, but we've been going for like an hour. So usually I limit the class that hour a day, right? If you have any other questions, shoot on support and assistance. Okay, so here's what I want to do, right? Um, beginners, I want you to look up um, the different candlesticks and memorize them, right? Just go on Google, type in forest candlesticks. You see every candlestick has a name, right? And every candlestick says it is bullish or bearish. And the lines kind of correctly, but they have to be. Um, Red or okay. green, right? So, um, advice I would say only draw the daily support and resistance levels because that's the levels that that has the most influence on the market, and that's the most important. Unless you are unless you're a scalper and you're trading these lower time frames, then yeah, you could go you could go lower, but the four hour under the four hour will make sense, right? Too much noise. And the lower you go, the, the less likely it's going to work. Right? So, I won't make the recording too long because it will take a long to upload on YouTube.
So you can cut it off right here. And it's good having you out. So have a um, good night. And we'll, be, have, we'll have live trading in the morning as usual at around um, okay. 28. And then we'll have class tomorrow night, right? So have a good night.